Welcome to Two Thirds Focus. My name is Rasmus. My name is Red. And I'm Jan. And I think that, we're all almost in focus. Almost, yeah. That was painless. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how are you guys doing? Oh, pretty Jan. good. Res, you, you're actually the one with a, a new background for a change. Yeah. I hoped you wouldn't notice. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm up visiting my dad cuddling polar bears again. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe looking at properties and land and Ooh. moving and workshops and things uh, but that's that's about all i'll say for now because there's yeah. nothing concrete and i don't want to jinx anything yeah yeah that's but cool it's, it, it, yeah it, uh, but it, it's going to be a long haul so don't expect any news soon but could be could be something okay nice nice so for now just polar bears and cuddles yes which of course is all you need in life yeah absolutely Red ha. <laughs> <My turn? laughs> uh, I've I've what I've I've worked a lot this week actually. Uh, even released two videos on the tubes. Um, oh yes, one was, you did. Yeah, uh, one was was ready for a few days. Um, it's the first part of a series of three videos about how to make leather sleeves for um, whiskey's flask. No nice. whiskey flasks. I, I have I have a thought on how you s were sewing them together, but continue for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, so yeah, the first one is the traditional way, uh, like the fancy flask sleeve, like clean work. The second one uh, will be out by the time that that this episode uh, airs. So it's the laser engraving way or the technological way or whatever it's i'm not sure how the portion it, how fancy and i have expensive tools way yeah that one <laughs> um uh, but that's actually my favorite one to date the, the the first one uh is nice i like it but the second one i wanted to make it more like a western uh saloon uh, style uh, thingy so with like um age i'm um fake no, it's not fake laser it's absolutely uh, real laser but in a way um worked in a way to make it older than it actually is if that makes sense uh so i wanted to make a flask that some kind of cowboy would have uh on the bag on the back of his horse or something close to that so anyway uh that's that will be the part two and the part three uh will be out probably next week and i also did a video about the laser engraver which is uh, really cool not the video but the machine <laughs> is really nice <laughs> <Awesome video>. uh, <laughs> It was yeah, it was yeah. good. Like there were, had some good points about the laser. Cool, thank you. Um, it was fun to do. It, I was a bit in, in a rush uh, because the the sponsor wanted it now in order to launch mm. the campaign for the thing. So yeah, I, I spent a good amount of the the week working on that. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty uni unusual to have uh, um, two video out in a week for me at least. Uh, that I'm not sure that's a pace I, I, I want to keep or I, I will it's keep. sustainable, yeah. Maybe yeah, not. maybe not. But one one uh, a video a week would 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 be perfect. So um, so yeah, that that's mainly uh, my week with more paperwork in order to be able to uh, sign for the the apartment uh, probably at the end of the month. So it's Ooh. it's an it's an endless story with the banks. You always have so much paperwork to uh, go through and and sign and send back and stuff. So um, yeah, but we are we are seeing the the end of it and yeah, probably signing uh, for the apartment at the end of the month. Uh, and if everybody everything is go well. After uh, uh, just a little bit of work inside, just to change the the paint, the the color of the walls, uh, or few repairs uh, here and there, we'll be able to move uh, mid February probably. Ooh, so nice. yeah, That's almost soon. Yeah, almost that, soon. That is pretty yeah. soon. And then we're gonna post the address on Facebook and have a huge in yeah. party. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The neighbors, the, the neighbors gonna love that. <laughs> 
No, no, but I'm pretty happy. And, and yeah, the, the week uh, uh, went very fast because of all the work that I had to do. So nothing much happened. Uh, just uh, me working on the videos, publishing them. Oh, so, oh car repairs uh, also, because I'm, I'm, it's still of a course. work in progress. Yeah, that's... that's uh, that free, it was almost done. Work. Sorry, what? That freestyle steering rod you showed the picture of. Yeah, yeah it's it. We uh, it's so close to be fully done. Uh, the other day we mm. still had like two hours of work, and it started snowing like heavy snow, so Ooh. we had to stop. Uh, and it's been three days, and all no, all the snow is gone. And tomorrow it should be sunny and and warm enough to to work on the car. So yeah. maybe tomorrow it will be done. So and and you, I guess you had real real fun with trying to find that small oil leak that was bothering you for months. Absolutely, it was so fun to have this oil leak for <laughs> maybe one or two years, and and thinking it was I was done with it after many repairs that I've done, and finally finding that it's only one bolt on the side of the motor that was unscrewed. It was a screw uh, that was unscrewed. And and has absolutely no purpose in the car. It's just oh. here for the oil uh, to except be leaking for being, from. Yeah, <laughs> except for being an oil leak. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's absolutely it. So we had to take apart the mot the oil motor in order to access it and to see it because it's behind the thing, which is behind the thing, and all of that. And and then we just tiny it up, and the leak was gone. And so for the listeners yeah. that are wondering, this is not a classic car restoration. We're talking about a normal French car. Yeah, normal yeah. French car. A little bit old <laughs> normal French car, but yeah, it's the case on every damn car here. And it's a known problem, which is a known issue, which drives me nuts because that kind of, of problems that you have on French cars are known by all the people that do mechanic and repairs and just the customer buying the cars after a few years. And they make it known to the, the constructor, Peugeot, Renault, and all that, and they don't change a thing. They keep working and making cars uh, the exact same way. It's not a but, bug, it's a feature. Yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> anyway, I will, I'll, I'll be done with that soon, and so the, um, the car will be able to pass uh, the... What's, what's the thing? The regulation, the test, the, the, the exam, the, the inspection. Inspection. Mm -hmm. um, one more time, and if... if if we did our job properly, it will be all okay and be good for two more years. So, yeah. Fingers crossed. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Jan? What did you do this week? I'm just back in the well, life, you could say, yeah. <laughs> after the vacation. No, it's, it's fine. It's like um, work as usual. But other than that, time has really flown by for the last week. Um, went by really fast. Mm. I basically spent my evenings with some miniature painting um also a little bit of filming time in the workshop i already over like in the beginning i had kind of a new year's resolution that i wanted to like do more like usual do more videos be more productive i am more productive but i am taking my time with it because yeah. i started realizing just after a few days that i really fast like i started to get burned out again like real yeah. fast mm. about it by having that time pressure i'm like wait a second, I'm not supposed to feel pressure about this. I'm doing this for fun. And uh, so what I did is just took my time. I uh, got probably more accomplished than I would have otherwise. <laughs> and um, I also started painting miniatures again. Yeah. So it has been really therapeutic just doing that whenever I have the time and I feel like it. I also started reading again, which I which absolutely sounds strange because I watch hours of YouTube every evening. But for some reason, I always told myself, you don't have time to read or you could use your time otherwise. <laughs> but once you realize that you've been watching YouTube for the last three hours and just scrolling around in the newsfeed, basically be, being bored, uh, it felt really good just start reading a book again. And nice. I have no issues falling asleep anymore in the evenings. Me nice. reading oh, that's good. a book, it's just, I usually make it about to 20 pages and then I... I'm gone. <laughs> Depends on the book you're reading, probably, but yeah, I hear you. No, it's um, I th it's I think more my bad eyesight because I don't wear glasses, so I, my eyes are strained oh, yeah. and I'm getting tired. So they start to tear up. I'm tired and I just I put the book aside to switch off the light and I'm gone. What kind of book are you reading right now? I started reading Harry Potter again. Oh, oh, cool. Because it's been I read Harry Potter when it came out, 
and I realized it when somebody told me it's like 20 or 25 years. Yeah, 20 yeah. years. 20 years for Harry Potter now. And I'm like, it's been that long. No, that can't be because, and then I was like, oh yeah, I, I did watch the movies once in a while, but I remember the books being slightly different. Mm. And then I just yeah. got that old fuzzy feeling again, like being curled up on the sofa, just like going through the books, not being able to sleep till I like finished the book. So I started doing that again and I'm like half th through the first one now. And I'm just think I'm just gonna read through all of them. We started uh, watching the movies again, mm -hmm. but this That's time with I... the kid. Yeah, Ooh. because the first time we watched it with my wife, we 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 were a young couple and and went to the cinema to watch them, and we were alone. Now we can watch them from home, and the kid is old enough to be watching with us. So we are currently at movie four, I believe, uh, and 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 he loves it. Uh, but movie five gets a little bit scarier. Than the previous uh, one. I mean, even four is kind of creepy with the yeah Cedric dying at the end. Yeah, spoiler yeah, yeah. Alert, I guess. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's been twenty years, so yeah, we can yeah, spoil yeah. whatever we're gonna, we want. We're gonna print. bleep that one out. And <laughs> 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 the off chase that someone in the last twenty years has not read, <laughs> and I didn't uh, remember I mean, that. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I mean, like it's even the third one is gets kind of dark with the Dementors showing up. Yeah, yeah, that that was just, the scary part in in the movie. And, it has uh, its moments. Don't spoil it. Like it, it really, it's been, it's been years <laughs> since I watched the movies, and it's been sorry. <laughs> really, it's been a long time since I read the books. So, so I'm the rat kind of, is not a rat. So 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 you know the Ron's yeah, rat yeah, is yeah, not a rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know, I know, I know. I know. Stop <laughs> spoiling it. <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, good. Yeah, so uh, that's, about, that's been about, basically it. Yeah. Good. You done? <laughs> Let me think about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's that's that's basically what I'm reading, painting, uh, filming a little bit. Quick question about painting. Are you only using mm. your airbrush or are you also... No, 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 no. Or, I'm, um, no? Airbrush is just for the base layers. Mm -hmm. and yeah, for instead some of using of a rattle can like I grew up with, I guess. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, the, no, I'm actually the priming I did with the rattle can. Mm. I, I do have primers for the airbrush, but I decided on the rattle can just to try something different because it's like a metal primer or a metal mm. colored primer. And then I did the um, airbrush, I did just two base coats. I keep the colors to a minimum and then I just started with the uh, brush for detail work and oil washes. Okay. So, but the brush I basically just use for cleanup and oil washes. Okay. And now it's gonna paint in a couple of details, the basing, and then it's gonna be airbrush again for OSL, which is object source lighting. Um, there's mm -hmm. a couple of lenses on those miniatures I wanna basically give a glow, mm -hmm. and I'm already like I've been pushing that away for like two days because I'm afraid I'm gonna fuck it up and just spray the whole miniature like ah, if, if something goes wrong there it's basically ruined <laughs> ah, just nah. do it worst case yeah. you'll start over <laughs> oh that yeah that that's 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 fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah or I'm gonna carry them outside and drive over them with my car well I mean whatever floats your goat <laughs> Uh, but red on on the on the flask or the sleeve for the flask you did. Yeah, I'm curious. Did you did consciously decide to go straight through the leather instead of sewing at an angle towards the edge? Yeah, because the the um, I want to show a different technique for each and every flask sleeve that I'm uh, mm. that I'm making. So the the three sleeves, the three videos show a different way to work the leather. Uh, emboss it, engrave it, or tool it, uh, and also stitch it. Uh, so it's three different technique uh, techniques uh, for the the stitching in the back. Um, I, I've consciously decided to not do a box stitch. Uh, is that what it's called? Uh, the, the 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 box stitching is basically you're making a box in in which you slide the flask in. So you have yeah. a bottom. It's, so it's not a ah, sleeve. Right. It's more more like a box. Mm -hmm. um, right. I I didn't want to do that because I I wanted the the, the sleeve to be um, wrapped around the flask. And as the flask is bent, uh, mm. if you do a box thing, uh, you have a space between the flask and the sleeve or the box, little box. So I didn't want to do that. Uh, plus I have 
this weird idea for the last one uh, that hopefully will will uh, be nice. Um, do, you, do you want to spoil it? Tease it? Uh, not yet, because I'm not a hundred percent sure what it would be. I had I had I had a few ideas. One would be um, to actually cut the leather of, uh, in the sleeve to uh, make the flask apparent. And to use that gap in the or hole in the in the leather uh, to be part of the design. So mm-hmm. just 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 as a comparison, you all know the Mandalorian, uh, the helmet. Yeah. He has his black uh, visor, the black part in the helmet. It's just yeah. like if you cut the leather with that shape, and so the, it became it becomes part of the design of the of of the yeah, helmet. Yeah, y- using the negative space and active flask exactly. to shine through and give that to yeah. Yeah, yeah. Design. yeah. You could also um, mm. use your laser engraver to engrave the flask and then do a cutout, like a round cutout or an edge cutout that shows yeah. the laser etching in the middle. Ooh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good idea. Um, but as I'm using the laser engraver for the second one, uh, the third one is, like I said, just showing a different technique. So I will probably just tool it uh, one by hand. One argue you're not using it on the leather, you're using it on no, the No, you're right. You're right. You're right. right. <laughs> if you uh, want to be sneaky about it. No, but I understand, okay, what so... I understand what you're trying to say. It's basically, you want to go away from that and just show, concentrate on the, the leather. Or like yeah, I, want, I wanted leather. to... Yeah, I wanted to focus on the leather and to show like three different technique, techniques of working the leather. But now I can w- make a fourth one with the uh, flask engraved and 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 work my way around with the leather, which is actually a, a pretty fine idea. So. I, I kind of love the idea of this. Like you took the Mandalorian as an example, but I kind of love that as like as a Star Wars, like they cut out like a helmet. Mm. Yeah. And maybe yeah, like that... we used the burning, like instead of laser just burning around it, but like have the cut out from the metal or like the the imperial sign or something like that yeah i'll see what i can do Uh, i'll see what i can do but yeah that was the idea just showing three different techniques different way of of doing it with different tools and because the first one was with the um, gold foil uh embossing machine Mm. uh that that looked really fancy that looked really, really good it's pretty cool, and the machine itself is not too expensive. I I, I wanted one for years, and I was like, "Man, it's going to be too expensive." And I, I did my research and got one for less than hundred than hundred bucks, I believe. Mm. So nice. wow. yeah, okay, that's that's something I, I I thought it would be much more expensive. But yeah, it's yeah, kind I, of a really specialized tool. It is, yeah. I mean, yeah. Plus, you have to to buy the stamp. Or um, that you are using because there is no stamp uh, coming with it when you buy it. Yeah. Uh, so I had to make uh, to order mine. Uh, I don't remember where, but probably in India or something like that because someone on Facebook are, are making them from from there for a pretty good price. I paid like thirty euros for it. Oh, that's really good. Uh, yeah, oh. basically yeah, yeah. Probably have their own CNC or uh, access Absolutely. to a CNC. Yeah, it, it's it's made by a CNC, but you can do whatever you want. So I I had this design that I wanted, and the size doesn't really matter. They 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 charge it for the size that you want. Uh, so all in all, I paid less than 150 euros for the machine and the stamp. And it's not only gold foil embossing machine. It also it's it can also just burn the leather. Uh, because you can set the t- temperature of the machine, mm-hmm. uh, and so it's a stamping machine as well, not only gold foil thing. Um, so it's like basically two tools in one, and it works on other stuff, not only on leather, paper, and whatever yeah. you want to use it for. So I, th- I think Doctor Multi used one of those for absolutely, yeah, uh, my business cards, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah or something yeah, yeah. similar at least. Uh, yeah. But but did you did you uh, comment on what I said about the stitching? Uh, what was it again? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Uh, no, so I, th- I think what you did in both of the videos that came out so far yeah. is that you poked like straight, like if this is the edge of the ladder, you just poked straight through. Yeah. And then looped that around to the other bit. Yeah. But a common technique when it comes to knife making in Norway is that you s- use the all at an angle. Yeah. Uh, I should do this way because then you can see it. Yeah. So that when you actually pull the leather close, you actually get a really, really nice tight gap between the leather, the, the two leather bits. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, so to answer your question, uh, no. Uh, if I, yes, it was a deliberate cho- choice to not do that for okay. um, the first one and the second one. 
Uh, I'm I'm hesitant about using it for the third one, but that's more more commonly used for the box teaching actually. And as I don't oh, want okay. to do yes. the box okay. box teaching, um, I'm not sure I will be using it. It depends. There is there is three ways of teaching leather. With the the, the common one is the the one that I've. Um, it's not the the most com the yeah the most common, but it's the easiest oh. one, which is the simple cross teaching. Uh, yeah. So it just cross the thread and it, you have nice crosses. Uh, the second one is um, a cross stitching, but in the back of the leather. So it, the, cross mm. is, the crosses are uh, hidden behind the leather and you just see straight lines, which is fine. Um, and then you have the baseball uh, stitching, which is also fine because half uh, you see the thread dis disappear between the two layers, the, the the two edges of the leather, which is kind of mm. cool. So that that was the one I wanted to use for the third one. But you have right. a good point. I yeah, can, I, I, can I haven't do done that. much of it myself. I tried mm. it on something I was sewing last. I don't even recall where I used it. The uh, sheet that, that you've made? Yeah. With, with the magical... Um, braid kind of thing? Braid, yeah. Did you use that for that now? I don't recall. <coughs> That's the problem now. Uh, I know I tried it on something. Maybe I just tried it just to try it because mm -hmm. half of it worked and half of it didn't. So um, but, uh, the problem being that you need to have sort of a, the correct angle so that when you pull it tight, yeah. you don't pull the leather apart. Yeah. Uh, so I don't actually know the proper way of doing it. Mm. Uh, I just know it exists. And it's really common and popular in Norway to have, instead of having that raised seam edge, yeah. you have it going flat against each other. Which, yeah, I mean, just taste really. Yeah, it it it's um, it can be aesthetical aesthetic choice, but it can be also very practical if you have um, if that's something that you put in your pocket and there is there is some friction uh, with the edge, it will it will burn your leather uh, mm. and 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 tear it uh, apart more quickly. Um, so yeah, depends. Um, but yeah, that's a good point. I, I I should use that in in one of my videos as well. That's something I can't wait to like dive in a little bit more this year. Leather working. Yeah, please mm. do. That's fun. I, I, I might have to steal a little bit of your style for that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> 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 good segue. Oh, come on, I, I, you I'm feel way too good about that point. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I was so quiet for like the last five minutes? <laughs> oh, you were thinking. <laughs> thinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who are not following along uh, our topic was supposed to be smoothly translationing over into some stuff, I'm losing words uh, how to find your style and sort of a good way of going about it my thought is that you start by imitating someone and in those parts where you make mistakes, that's your style mm -hmm. yep so if you are a painter, if you try to copy someone else's painting, then if you do a good job, then that's a really good imitation of that painting, but it, you will never get it exact. But your style will be in those faulty bits, I guess you could say, yeah. that make it stand apart. Yep. I think you're right when it comes to the very early stages of, of anyone's work. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk for myself because that's the topic I know the most i believe um <laughs> when when i started to make videos for youtube uh obviously i had no idea uh how to do it and what to do and and uh i had no idea that that i i needed a style or a personality or to develop any kind of idea behind just making a project and 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 filming the project um so i believe that the two first videos that i made was with my brother in my garage and in his garage or, or workshop uh, it was making a chisel for wood turning uh, with a carbide uh, head and the second one was just making a workbench and and it was just for fun uh, it was absolutely just for fun um, so we filmed with an iphone and the editing was done with the uh, iMovie on on my uh, mac which was uh, uh, free and easy to use so it was there is there was nothing there was no idea behind it uh apart from just filming it and having fun and doing what jimmy does every single week and and that because 
my brother and I were um, big fans, um, still are a big fans of, of his work and style and personality. So that's that's what we tried, and and obviously it was copied some. Sp- speed up footage and some weird angle and not, not caring too much <laughs> about the light because it's more um, about the project yeah. and what you are doing actually, not not the, all the style and the, the beauty of the shots. But as you, you're right, as I went uh, more seriously into YouTube and, and starting filming my, my, my project, uh, I took um, all the differences with Jimmy's videos or other people's videos all the, the differences that I had were amplified and, and I had to choose from them what to keep and what to throw away in order to develop my own style. So that's probably how I, I find uh, m- anyone find his style by first copying, uh, then as time goes by and as you have more experience and, and you know what you like, what you don't like, you you start to find your own style and 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 stick with it because that's what also defines you and defines your work. Mm. Maybe and plus plus also no, I agree with that. But also, it is hard these days to not get the impression that you copy someone. Like mm-hmm. even if you're not trying to copy someone or you're not having an actual style, because the field is so is widened a lot. Like there's so many makers these days. And if you see, it's always fun watching early videos and then watching like one of the newer videos of that person because you can see how they evolve and how yeah. they change their style yeah. over time. Um, yeah, but it's it's difficult to come up with something that is your own. There's You can basically put on drawers and put them in drawers. There's the overly energetic one with the like loud music in the background. There's the sped up, sp- or sped up um, videos about it. There's the explanatory ones where it's more explaining and more about telling the, like basically not telling a visual story, but actually telling a story on mm-hmm. how you're doing it and how you got there. So there's many different ways on that. Yeah, I I, I feel like you even if you were to try to imitate someone, especially as a beginner, you wouldn't necessarily know exactly what they did to make it look the way it looks. Yeah. So you would just try to imitate the end result and not imitate the process. There, I disagree. Because the first huh? videos that I did and the, what I did in the beginning was, and bluntly, and I was really open about it too, uh, was copying Laura's style. Mm-hmm. And there was a reason for it because uh, I... Videography is as much as a hobby for me as the making itself. And mm. I found the angles and the shots and the cinematography of Laura, if you look at the videos, it's just top notch. Mm-hmm. Like the visual storytelling of her, especially talking about the early videos of her, oh, yeah. are just fantastic, especially with the music. Because I never liked the sped up um, parts or the, the sped up makers like Jimmy. Love the project. Um, I love what he's doing, but the audio is killing me. Like I have to switch off the audio because sped up somebody yeah. using a bandsaw or a grinder is just giving me a migraine. So um, or banging on stuff. And with Laura, it was just music, videography, cutting to the beat. I'm not saying I did a good job copying her <laughs> because it's what no, everybody, but, but and, and I knew that, I knew what she was doing and I knew what I had to copy or what I wanted to. No, yeah, no, yeah, okay, like, okay. It wasn't for me copying. It was for me just like, that's the kind of style I want for my videos. This is kind of the story I want to convey with it. Yeah. And some of the videos, I feel like I got close, but never like reached it. Mm. Uh, but it was a good starting point to show me where what I wanted to do, because soon after that, I found out that there's something for me, there's something missing in the way I'm doing it. And I would like to explain a little bit more. And also that was the part where the whole Fools with Tools thing started, where I started listening to them, where I started writing with them. And there was, I wanted to do more storytelling, more aggressive. I wanted to do a little bit more quirky fun in it. And that wasn't mm. I wasn't able to do that with the kind of videos I've been doing till then. So and I think this is how you now I understand like 
a couple of years later, how other people change their styles over time. Mm -hmm. Because it also has to be exciting for the person making the videos. And I think this, at one point, you're just getting a little bit, yeah, you want to do something different. May, may I do a small comparison? Mm -hmm. uh, you have this, like, I, I also for the reference, uh, or for the record, I, I think like the official name for what Jimmy is doing when it comes to style of video should be called Jimmy Jim, Jimmy Fast Hands. <laughs> that is good. I, I think that should be the official name of that kind of style of video. Uh, but it, so if if it, if you look from him, I think that uh, Hassan or Habu mm -hmm. is doing a lot of the very same thing. It's like it's the same exact editing technique like speeding up the uh repetitive monotonous things mm -hmm. and then slowing down for some interesting bits and that's it Abs uh, absolutely and i love his projects but i turn yeah. off the sound yeah and i i really also hate that jarring uh effect it got when you start up a power tool without mastering the audio and then speed it up uh, that's like great thing to me. That's like you're trying to tear my ears off. Yeah. Uh, but I I would like your opinion on this though, because as far as I recall, uh, Sebastian Olaris is mm -hmm. doing sort of the similar thing, but he had at least for a long while the style of using nature sounds on top that of all the power fantastic. tools. Fantastic! I loved it. I was nature laughing sound so of hard. music. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he used. I think for a couple of videos, he used the same sound for the same tools. So he had a yeah, 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 tool. Yeah. So there would yeah. be like, I think it was the, the circular saw, the hand circular saw that had like the birds chirping. Yeah. And it was hilarious. I thought it was genius. Absolutely. Agreed. Because you but, see but, the speed up video and he's turning it on and you're already like mm, taken off your earphones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so I, I don't recall if he actually were doing a lot of speeding up of the footage, but I think he was. Uh, he's um, doing. Uh, he did a lot of mixing, mix and matching. Like he, okay. there's parts that were sped up, I believe, and a lot of things where he put focus on where he slowed, like not slow mo, but slowed it down to a normal speed. Yeah. So in in my mind, I see uh, Seb as being sort of in between Laura and Jimmy in mm -hmm. the videos. You sort of see he's using the audio effects that Laura brought into the Maker Community. And he's using a bit of the storytelling that Jimmy does. But he's already away mind. from that, I believe. Like the last video. Yeah, but because him, that, like that becomes his that becomes yeah. his whole new style in between them. Yep. Uh, and and Seb, if you're listening, we absolutely do adore your videos. We don't yeah. mean to yeah. like talk no, down, but we're saying no, no. We're just discussing, I guess, a trends in the maker community more than anything. There's, um, there's a lot of bit of trending and um, really a lot of it just finding your own way and what is suitable for you or what you feel comfortable with, I believe. Mm. I haven't found yeah, it yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, it come. I'm still it searching. Come. Yeah. yeah. I'm still yeah. searching as well. But, and I, I've, I've, so, I've, so am I. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird thing. Well, I also I haven't feel like I've done enough videos to even know what I'm still, like what my style and voice is. Same mm -hmm. here, yeah. Uh, I... I felt like I had something that was really me when it comes to the video of uh, the hospital on the mountain. I love yeah. that one. Yeah. Uh, but th th there is a through line there, uh, a little bit anyway. So uh, a couple of years ago, I and a friend went to a wedding in India and I made a vlog out of that. And I just knew that, oh, this is going to be a super unique experience. I want to film a bit of bits of it. I want to make something out of it. So I did. I brought the camera with me. I filmed snippets here and there, and I stuck it together into something. Uh, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it, what, how I wanted to tell the story. Then I remembered that on Tested, they had made a short film from the Arctic expedition. Mm -hmm. And so, And not to call out, James Malte too much here, but he really called me out and noticed that, oh, I basically copied that style. Where both, like, because it was it was a framework. It was just a scaffolding for me to say, I have no idea what to do with all of this footage. I've never done anything like this before. Mm -hmm. But that's a bit of storytelling I really liked. And it's about going somewhere about what happened and the place that you went. So let me take that scaffolding and put my video on top of it and 
then I adjust it as I go along to see if I can make it into something that is more me. Yeah, and you have the freedom of doing that. And this is the thing I'm talking about copying other people or like to find your own style. Uh, what I found out or what we often forget is it's well, one kind Jimmy the rest is doing those vlogs and he complained at one point that people not liking his vlog parts. I love them. Exactly. I like him too. And I think it's great that he's doing them. And this is one of the same things. It's like, if you want to do videos like that with the hospital, mm. as a growing channel, as someone in the beginning, if you build up that kind of style, nobody's going to complain afterwards. So we, oh, yeah. we are free to do whatever we want to do with it. And I, I think, and Red, this is something I think you also experience by changing your style. It's not always yeah. great with all of your audience because they're used to a certain format. Mm -hmm. So kind of how we shape our channel in the beginning, this is, or not in the beginning, but how we shape our channel over time is basically also how we shape our audience or basically we draw in that kind of audience. You train them, I think, is maybe a way of saying it. Yeah, I didn't, didn't want to say that that hard. <laughs> like, not that hard. <laughs> I, but I, um, yeah, if, if, if I decide... I'm all over the place and I decide to mm. be all over the place for a long time because there's so many different things I want to try. So um, I'm and people that follow me or people that subscribe to my channel, they're, they're going to expect that. Yeah, uh, I, um, I seem to recall Bob Claggett of I Like To Make Talk Stuff saying that he consciously decided to not stick two videos about the same kind of making after each other on his channel so that he never ended up falling into that trap of having an audience that only wanted to see one kind of thing mm -hmm. and having them complain about it. it. It's completely fair that, oh, I'm subscribing to him because I just like his woodworking or his or miniature work or how he displays these things or whatever, uh, or his arcade cabinet or whatever that, yes. whatever it is. But by being sort of upfront and ready with it and saying that, no, no, you will see a, a bit of everything if you subscribe. Then no one actually can complain about it because that's the premise you signed up for. Exactly. Even though you are selective about what you choose to watch, but yeah, you're you're right. I tried to do um, kind of the same thing at the beginning of my channel because I was doing middle working, woodworking, leather working, blacksmithing, and and I tried to do something different every week. Um, but as Jan said, I changed the style of my video over time. Um, I wanted to try different stuff because of ideas that I had or advice from people or recommendation or videos that say, oh, how do you grow your channel and, and, and so on and so on. So at first I was not showing my face, then I was showing my face, then I was starting to talk and trying to just do a little bit at the beginning and the end. Um, now I also do like voiceovers uh, to explain what I'm doing or what I'm using and, and how. Um, but as I said, I don't think I have found my style. Um, I'm, I'm still searching for it. I know what I like and what I don't like. I know what um, involves more work the, when you chose when you choose to do a certain style of video. Um, like doing a voiceover for me just takes more time because I'm not I'm doing it at the end, so I have to write it and to record it and to sync it with the video. Whereas people just talking in front of the video, the the camera during the project kind of can wing it or, or or prep it properly, write a script and everything. I think the different people do different things so they they can they can bring it to or already be serious about the preparation of the video and, and to be honest about that which is especially hard for the three of us because we're not native speakers yeah and there is also that I, I didn't want to talk at the beginning because I was not sure about my English and I'm still yeah. not so it, 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 I, it would sound silly for me to from the get-go start talking in English in my videos and 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 be you're, like you're French Spe you speaking English just sounds silly. That's the premise. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. But, but um, says the Norwegian no, uh, guy. <laughs> uh, no, I, I decided not to talk in my video because of Jimmy. Because in the podcast making it, he once said that 
uh, it was not a deliberate choice from him, but one of his friends told him, oh, you are a genius because you're not talking in, in your videos, so you can't, uh, anybody can watch it where, wherever uh, they are watching it, watching it from, whatever the country they are living in, they can understand what you are doing because it's, there is no talking, no words and just, just images. Mm -hmm. So I, I decided not to talk in my videos to make it uh, more accessible to a lot of people. Even though the, the goal was not to have a big channel with a big audience, big numbers and stuff, it's always good to see the number growing. Um, not for the Diego, well, kind of. Um, but it, it's just nice to see that your work is rewarded by people watching it and, and you're not just lost into the void of YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I decided not to talk uh, just to make it more accessible to a lot of people. Being myself a, a, a language teacher and av av having uh, lived uh, in different countries, uh, I wanted to make it more accessible to different nationalities and people and, and, and such. Now, I also had to record voiceover or to uh, present the project or to present a tool because of the sponsorship. And that's one of the reasons that I, uh, um, or yeah, reasons uh, that uh, made me change my style, my style of video, because I had to explain or to um, present a product, uh, which is not my, my, my strong, um, Part I believe that I'm not super good at doing that, but I want I want to do it staying myself. So I don't want to be super jumpy all over the place and say, "Oh, look at that! It's the best product yeah. in the world or the best tool." I can't do that. I I I, I don't know how to fake that kind of stuff. I mean, it's fine. I, I, I mean, it's not you like you're standing there and going, "Laser, leather, yeah, cutting." <laughs> It's yeah, like, <laughs> that that would be. That, I, I should do that. That would be a great video. I mean, I'm, the, I'm the 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 grumpy leather worker. Deal with it. Yeah. But uh, also, I I don't I don't, I don't necessarily like think up. that. Huh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Russ. Go ahead. Uh, but I I don't necessarily think that that false enthusiasm do you any, will do you any favor, because so yeah, many people I, are doing it that if you. If you speak in a certain way, you are telegraphing that I don't feel sincere about what I'm saying, even though you hear the enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it 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 feels to me anyway that it it turns into something that of certain people say when they sell out. If that makes sense. That yeah. reminds me on Stand the Boat guy. Do you guys ever played Monkey Island? No, I the didn't. The guy's sitting there with his sombrero and just like selling boats. And he's like the typical salesman with his poncho and just like with his hands the whole time and yelling. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's so... right. I, I, I believe that some people are, are, are born to do it. Uh, I have this energy and this uh, enthusiasm that can get really show in a video and, and brings you mm. along in their adventure. Um, and also there's People, it's so obvious that they are faking it, and and when it appears to me that they are faking it, I can't go with the video. I mean, I mean, it, yeah. it, it's a it's a it's well, a big they, no they, for me. You, they lose without, credibility. Yeah, with, yeah, without like being being negative about it, but it's just kind of like the um, especially what you see like in American television. Yeah, so it's just yeah, really absolutely. really different, and it's for them. It's some viewers won't even realize it when they watch them because for them it's so similar to the television it's like them not being sincere is nothing they have a problem with because it's just the whole like what they see on tv mm. it's just but for us because this is something as us as european and norway uh, <laughs> that uh, yeah, it, could, it, it could be something to it yeah this it's really a typical for me i, I used to live in the u.s and I, I watched the TV and everything over there. And I was never a big fan of, I loved HGTV, the houses, like the garden makeover and everything. But I hated the way the people acted. Like this overly energetic, unsincere. Yeah. But it's something you get used to. You, you kind of worn down. And this is mm -hmm. something we usually don't have, not at that kind of level in Europe. 
That, like, the, this the, is our TV program is a different one. And this yeah. is still where you can see that YouTube comes from TV or some people treat it as like a TV channel for them. Mm. Or they, they are mimicking the TV because that they know that's what people are used to and will understand without having or to. Or what they're used to. Yeah, yeah. 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 But f f for me, it it yeah, it just uh, make them lose credibility. I'm not interested in the project anymore because just the voice of someone being loud about just what they are doing and jumping all around. If it's not part of their pers personality, because I know this person, um, um, I've 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 met some people who do that kind of video, and they are like this in real life. So that's them and they are not faking it so that's totally fine with me and i'm i'm aboard and i'm watching the video because i know that that's how they are and it's true but as as soon as it sounds fake um yeah i'm i'm not interested anymore because i i, I feel betrayed i mean if you are lying to me at the beginning of the video about who you are how could I know that you are not lying to me about the project that you are making, that you are or actually everything. making it or everything mm -hmm. or anything else? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't I don't like that kind of thing. I don't like. Um, but yeah, I like I, I like honesty is, and truth. This and, is how and, a lot of us are. Um, but I think not everyone has an issue with that. No, no, it sure. And I, if you watch because, it strictly for the entertainment and you're not building it anyway i think it's more a problem for us because we are also makers yeah but that, that's makers. where i was going that that's why i was going if you are watching for entertainment and 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 that what you are searching is is uh energy and enthusiasm mm -hmm. and and powerful speech and joy and people smiling and being happy to be with uh together to do a project that's entertainment and that's absolutely fine. And I, I also like that kind of video. But for me, that's not maker's video. That's purely a show that's entertaining. And even though uh, people can, can be building stuff in that frame of videos, which is totally fine, that's something different to me. That That's also a style that I, I enjoy sometimes, but that's not the same kind of videos. And you know the, the suspense that they are also building in some tv shows like um oh, uh, jesus yeah <laughs> the, the oh we did cut and you have you have like 30 seconds of music and people watching the guy which is about to cut something just to see if the knife cuts what the fuck is that 30 seconds of people watching each other it doesn't happen in life I mean, or, or, that, I, or that false pause they had before they announced yeah. who lost or who won or and whatever. the winner is <laughs> that guy no yeah. <laughs> no no the winner is that oh, guy oh you, you nailed it. that one that yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> i mean that 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 drives me crazy it's 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 uh, it, it 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 looks like it's made for tv uh, or the winner is and we have the commercial break and you get back mm. to it and the the winner is and 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 you keep going i i don't like that one i'm, I'm not watching youtube videos and if this was the secret recipe of um the Mythbusters, because yeah. it is still like that kind of format. But a, you could see Adam is always like he's sincere. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he's he's just excited about stuff, and that is him. So that's yeah. the sincerity, for like for one, which is not, not what well, most viewers are not used to in um, the American television. And mm -hmm. the other thing about it is also they actually. You could see they, they were engineers, they built their stuff. And even with the camera, there was not as much fake in it. Yeah. But still the cutting, I thought, of Mythbusters, I watched some of the older episodes. It still makes me cringe. Because like they, for, for us, the exciting parts are not really shown. It's more the result, what they're doing with it. Yeah. And uh, I, I feel like they, they, they did a, a really good sort of work throughout the whole span of Mythbusters. Yes. Well, because they started with having something that no one has done before and not knowing what it is and then trying to sh create an entertaining show out of it. Yeah. Which yeah. is, it, it is amazing that they did. Exactly. And then it's more like, okay, so what other shows are kind of like this? So we let's use that formula and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. uh, but then as you move through the seasons, like there's more process, there's more, how do we build this? Not only what is the, the thought process, oh, here's the thinking, 
here's how we're thinking of building it. And then instead of showing detail how to build it, they just go to, OK, so we realized this problem. We fixed that. Now it's here. And it goes on boom, 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 boom. And yeah. then they get into showing, oh, no, no, let's actually show the cutting, the screwing, the welding, the bending, all of the bit, yeah. which yeah. is what we like. Uh, but when it comes to sort of the editing and suspense in it, I feel like, as far as I recall anyway, the only really sort of suspenseful cutting they did was just before something was going to blow up. And of course, yeah. you knew it was going to blow up. There was yeah, no question yeah. about that. Yeah, with Break just up stuff and how shooting, big shooting guns. Again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ma make you watch through, I don't know, how many minutes of commercials just, just to see that thing go boom. Yeah. yeah. We should do that on YouTube videos. Like, you just spend five minutes showing what stuff that you are doing. And just before the end, just before the big reveal, you, you put. And now like, a word from our sponsor. Shot. Yeah. <laughs> that or, or your face watching your uh, table and the table watching you and, and that chant contre chant just yeah. to build up the suspense. I mean, it would, wouldn't make sense. But I, I to 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 un not answer because it was not question, but uh, to to get back to what you are saying, Jan, about changing the the style uh, or your style over the years, um, I, I did it. I don't regret it, even though I have I have lost a lot of subscribers when I changed my style uh, over a few videos. Um, I think that what's the most important to me now when I'm doing a, a YouTube video. It just to be to be true to myself. Mm -hmm. So um, just do what I want to do uh, in the style that I want uh, to, to do it. Uh, sometimes I will be talking because I I I feel that a quick intro introduction or a voiceover will add something to the video because I will be explaining something. <coughs> Sorry, um, and not only for a sponsored video when I'm introducing a new tool, just a project, um, uh, the, the the leather bag uh, shield thing that I did for my kid, it didn't need a, a, a voiceover, but I just wanted to explain what I was doing and why I was mm -hmm. doing it. Um, in my latest video, the the one with the flask, I, I'm not talking, I'm not showing my face i don't think of really no, quickly it's, it's kind of the old style well I mean, yeah yes while working on it you're not hiding from the camera but the focus is on the flask yeah you're absolutely not, you're not trying to cut yourself out of the shot which i thought yeah. was really nice because there are some mm. people that just by any means do not show their face in the video which i understand the the the, the problem that i have uh is the other way around. I was watching a video on, on I don't know, uh, TikTok the other day about a, a, a big singer, a big star, uh, singing a song in a complete different uh, way than uh, his regular style. So I believe it was a rapper, a rapper, uh, whatever. I don't know how it's pronounced. Rapper. A guy that raps, yeah. Um, like uh, talky singy, <laughs> <laughs> and he was singing a country song, and he he totally nailed it. It was Ooh. perfect uh, from the beginning to the end. It was absolutely wonderful, and his version of his own so song in country style was even better than the one in in his regular style, like rap song. What upset me with the video was that Jimmy Fallon was sitting on the other side of the couch. And when the guy starting to sing the thing, he just went around the, the couch just to be in the frame of the shot. He's not the fucking star of the show. He's not the one doing the, the, the performance, performance. At, at that moment. He just wanted or needed to be in the frame. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't want to see Jimmy Fallon. I want to see... I want to see the guy singing the song like he's never sung it before, because that's what's important at the moment. That's... So, for me, um, it's it's probably the same when it comes to to makers video. I enjoy watching the guy or the woman making the project. I I I, I enjoy watching them working. I enjoy seeing them for the personality. And but if you are making a video to show off and to just show yourself instead of the project. It, it's it's not how I consider 
that that's not what I'm interested in. It's like a blacksmith hitting and uh, like working on a piece, and the camera is just showing the blacksmith while hitting something. That's all. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. I understand why people do them because they are building an audience, because they are building a community, and that's also my goal. And that's why I'm also talking more in my videos. But for me, and and it's only my humble opinion. Uh, when I'm making a, um, a project video, the focus should be on the project and not on me. That's why I didn't show my face at the beginning. And, and I only showed my hands, what I was doing and how much I want. changes. Mm -hmm. This is absolutely fine. This is what you want. And I think that's what most of us is like the project in the foreground. But there are some people that prefer the kind of vlogging style that want to make the channel about themselves and what they're Absolutely. making. And it's Absolutely. just basically that the level of where you want to be is like, is the project in the foreground or is the personality or the person in the foreground? Yeah, but I, that's totally fine by me because both are interesting. As I said, more one is more about learning something about the project, how to work the material and, and the techniques. The other one would be a little bit more about uh, entertainment, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, the, the the kind of video that that don't watch is probably uh, people over excited about a project just just showing themselves uh, absolutely not no working uh, whatsoever yeah. uh, showing the results Co everything it a being project video and being like seventy percent them <laughs> yeah or, or eighteen or or ninety nine percent and and yeah. always shouting and dancing and jumping and and overly excited without it showing anything that they are actually done because they can they could buy the 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 thing in a shop or having someone else making it and and then claiming oh look what I did okay but you are so you you are that's not a maker video that's that's a purely entertainment video you you enjoy watching the person doing that because you you like the person you like the style you like how it's filmed um and and everything the, the editing of the video but you're not watching for the project because there is no project you are beyond i mean yeah, but, but it's, be, good, it's good analyzing something like that and then you know what not to copy basically <laughs> and mm. and and which which bring back to, to to my original point um changing your style is um actually a good thing because the more you produce videos the more you try new stuff the more you will know what's your style what is you what you want to do what you yeah, don't want your to own do. voice in that yeah Absolutely. Yeah, I can. I can. I've, I've I've made jokes in the past in my videos, or or just little bits of humor, which was probably uh, not not just but most of the people. <laughs> I don't know uh, because my humor is like kind of special and weird. <laughs> um, but maybe maybe not. Maybe not. I don't aren't, know. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I don't see myself jumping around and. And cracking jokes, jokes, and and speaking loudly because that's just not who I am. And and talking in a video it just is is already much of an effort for me. Uh, and and now I can smile in front of a camera, which took me quite a while to be able to do. <laughs> uh, which which I'm super happy ab uh, about that. I'm super happy about that. Uh, and and my style will probably change again in 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 the future, which is fine. I just want to. Stay stay true to myself and to my personality and and um so just as, as a last point um your audience will will also change this time uh when i tried new stuff i lost subscribers but i also gained subscribers and some people were like oh you changed your style but i i like what what you are doing now i like seeing you more i like when you talk and i know more about your personality and so on and so on um so I think it's good to try new stuff. Uh, the 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 risk that you can have probably uh, is when you have a big audience of uh, a hundred thousand mm. subscribers. I'm not there yet, so I don't really know. Um, you're nearly, you're nearly there. Uh, mm. Yeah, still thirty thousand to go. So yeah, it can take a few years to get there. I don't know. Uh, hopefully not. Um, but. The more, uh, the bigger the audience, the, the 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 bigger the risk. I believe when you have 500 subscribers, you can do whatever you want on your channel, because if they are there, they are interested in you and in your project, not especially in your style. Um, yeah. 
when you have a big audience, they are used to a product. They are used. It's like a TV show. You get uh, back to a TV show every week because you like the show. You like the the the, the characters. You like the story. You like how it's uh, shot. Uh, you like the style of it. So you get back to it because you enjoy it. So when you have a big audience and and you are doing that for a long time, changing your style from in in one day from one week to another is a big risk. I don't see Bob uh, from I Like To Make Stuff uh, changing his style completely and going to a Jimmy style video uh, just for the fun of it because people would probably be confused to not seeing him and, and hearing him, the voiceover, the explanation and 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 the energy that he shows in, in his videos. Um, so, yeah. But- I feel like, though, there's a bit of a scale between being very much craft-oriented and basically doing personality prostitution Mm. at the other end. Uh, Like, uh, Jimmy is, I feel, very much on, at least in his normal videos outside of his vlogs, he's very much on the end of, it's all about the craft. Mm -hmm. I am not even really into shot. Mm. Uh, And then you have other people who is all about the excitement and personality and entertainment on the other end, mm-hmm. I feel anyway. Uh, and and then you might have like uh, Bob Claggett and Alec make stuff somewhere in between. Yeah, like his his brand is not limited to him personally, mm-hmm. but he is doing the talking. He is showing himself. He's giving a lot of himself and his his family. I think he's strong. Yeah, he is a brand. Like he's, I, I think he's strongly yeah. representing a brand for him. Yeah, but he's not selling himself. So to speak. No, he he's himself puts the focus on the project, but this is yeah. kind of still he is not just he's more than just the person building it. Mm. He's also yeah. like the the entertainer or the the story builder behind it, and he puts himself into frame in a really positive way. I believe, like I like watching him because, of yeah. course, he is excited about that stuff. It's not that somebody told him to like, oh, build that next time, and he's trying to be excited about it mm-hmm. because it's yeah. all stuff. And this is why his budget changed so much. It's something for his kids. It's something to mm. showcase. It's it always depends on what he it caters his needs at the moment. But he represents it really well. Raz, do, yeah. do you mean that he's not betraying himself in order to make views and 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 yeah, sell yeah. stuff? Yeah. Right, I completely yeah. agree yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. That, that's sort of where I put him in between <coughs> because uh, he's very clear and open about from the beginning what his channel is about. Mm-hmm. Like he himself is part of the brand of I like to make stuff, but it's not mm-hmm. limited to him because he's yeah. also had Josh and a couple of the other guys featured in there yeah uh but it's also not like only doing entertainment and spectacle mm-hmm. just for the views yeah. and seeming to do anything for money everything to only to get the money like it's it's very much craft focused but he's in between because the personality is strong and it's there at yeah. least that's how i feel about it this does, does that make sense absolutely it, yep, yeah absolutely I think there is also something to be said about um, the kind of project that you do because you, you can you can be very energetic and enthusiast uh, from the first video because that's your personality, but also do a very serious project, uh, something uh, like I I don't know what uh, not a cutting board but some regular woodworking like like fine table or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and changing your style wouldn't would not necessarily mean changing the tone of your video, changing how you act on camera or how you speak or what you say, but the the project is itself. What I mean by yeah. that is, uh, I feel that um, uh, I, I don't have name because that that's not necessarily people from the community or people that we know. Uh, but the, I, I stumble. But w- when you go to the trend uh, section of YouTube, uh, all the, the only makers videos, so to speak, that are there are people building like crazy stuff, stuff that yeah, Don Malecki, I guess, is prevalent there. Sorry, what? Don Malecki, he he's done like uh, a lot of epoxy resin tables. 
Oh yeah, in, that, that's not what I was thinking. No, I, I mean including one where which seems really American to me uh, is having all kinds of gun she- uh, shells and casings. Yeah, and cast that in epoxy and make a table out of it. I was like, yeah, that's that's America. Oh, yeah. that's, that's that's America. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's America. That's just, that, there's that, there's a bald eagle somewhere stuck in that resin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I I was more yeah. thinking. Um, I I don't know. I don't I I don't think I have a good example for that. But I remember the guy uh, okay. that made the the uh, the basket panel that you can't miss because it's moving. Uh, according oh to the... yeah, stuff made here. I yeah. like that stuff yeah. because he's such an engineering nerd. I love his channel though. Yeah. yeah. And, and so my point is that the video is great because it, the, the idea is um, very origin, original, but it's developed in a way to, to be entertaining. And, and the product, the end product, is what it is. It was just the idea. Um, that kind of video, I think, inspired a lot of people to do stuff that has no reason to, to have been made. Um, I, I don't, we always that, that's always been around and it's always been famous. I mean, yeah, the best, and, best example, Colin first. I love it for the entertainment. Yeah, that guy is no, just uh, same crazy. thing. It's entertainment. No, no, no. But same thing. Yeah, the, Colin first is is, is entertainment. He's, he's he's done great builds, um, and and it's an entertainment um, alongside with makers videos because he's, he's showing how he is doing it. Um, I, I I don't know. I don't have a good example. Maybe there's a video on YouTube that uh, a power hammer uh, uh, powered uh, toilet paper roll or something. <laughs> I don't know. But that that, oh, that uh, would not. I have so an that's idea. an idea. I have, <laughs> that's an idea for you guys. Uh, it wouldn't make sense to me to watch the video. Um, if I don't know the guy and I know the style is interesting, the project mm. is, doesn't interest me. I don't. There is no way for, or there is no reason for me that w- someone would just take the time and energy and resources and money and materials to try to build that shit. Um, I, I, I'm probably not really clear, and people may misunderstand what I what I'm trying to say. Um, no, I enjoy. Fine. I enjoy, I enjoy the, the entertainment videos as much as you guys. I enjoy the makers video as much as you guys. And and sometimes some some kind of craziness in, into the project is great. But um it's not because you have a stupid idea and you are you are building it that you have the the you can have the expectation of of getting hundreds of thousands of views on your videos because because it's just crazy or no, stupid. Usually you, and, you, build, or, you build crazy stuff because you want to build it. Like that that's the way mm. it should be. Yeah. No, sure, sure. I have no problem with that. But I, 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 let me rephrase that. Trying to find the stupidest project on earth just in order to get views annoys me. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. that's that's probably the the, the, the a, a better way to to put that. If the idea is crazy but fun and crazy and good and crazy and useful, I have no problem with that. I've watched uh, Colin first uh, uh, building a, a, a next wing in his garden and and a, a mm-hmm. bomb shell under his house because that's fun. Uh, that's just fun. That's entertainment and that that that's good video. That's good content. When that's what you want to 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 watch uh, on a on, on a weird day, rainy day, Sunday, Sunday yeah. afternoon when you're bored, mm. but I just think, trying think... to search for the stupidest idea of something that you can do otherwise, just in order to get views. I mean, I I personally don't get. It. I respect the people that do would do it and and enjoy it, but that's just not the kind of video that I want to watch. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I feel like I'm very much in the camp of I. Sort of need there to be a personality there mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for me to actually care about the video, mm-hmm. unless I'm very specifically looking for a solution to a specific problem. Yeah. Uh, so but again, in, again, in, if in, just... in that in that sense, the style of Jimmy's videos doesn't yeah. really work for me. Okay. I watch a lot of them because. I'm, I am really interested in what he's making and having met him and listening to the podcast, there is personality yeah. there. I can fill in the blank from the video mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. with the podcast. Uh, but uh, 
but uh, but but I would I actually enjoy a lot more mm-hmm. the Bob's videos, Sila Foxlin's videos, mm-hmm. uh, Alan Pan and Colin Firth. Yeah, I enjoy those a lot more because there's personality there. Oh yeah, they are same. not shying away from the craft. They are having the craft very much in focus, but it's yeah, it's also them personally doing something. It's it becomes more human and more relatable. And they stay. And, yeah, yeah. They seem to stay very much true to their ethos. Yeah. Even though Colin Firth, you could say he's a major sellout because he's getting paid to make everything he does now. Yeah, but that's also mo- the dream for uh, a lot of makers on YouTube yeah. they, to be paid. But like, to make like yes, the absolute uh, freedom to be able to do whatever he does, and it's still amazing yeah. with how little, how small his team is. But like like the at at and uh, the tie fighter he built like that was on commission I think I think basically yeah yeah but I would uh, personally I would love to be paid to make a tie fighter or or swing in my garden if I were were to sell out I would very much prefer to do it for someone that allows me to do something that stupid absolutely Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm also pretty sure that nobody came up to him and said hey build a tie fighter I'm like I want you to build something crazy. Here's some material, and he's like, "Oh, how about a Tie Fighter?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. honestly, I'm probably thinking like, uh, I don't even recall. It was a steel supplier or a hardware supplier in mm-hmm. the UK, I think, mm-hmm. that sponsored him, and I, I'm pretty certain, although I don't know for certain, uh, that was contradictory. But anyway, uh, I think that all of those ideas are probably his because no other normal human being would do that <laughs> would, no would have that idea oh, yeah. probably the company reached out to him and say hey we want to sponsor a video mm-hmm. and either they come out and say here's our budget and he said cool with that kind of money we can do something crazy like this uh, you're, yeah, yeah you're right. oh don't uh, be so I'm sure about guessing. that i know a couple of people or actually a, quite a few people that would instantaneously build a freaking big spaceship somewhere in the desert yeah yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm True one enough. of them, and I know, <laughs> I, I know them as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Raz, I, I have a question for you. Um, mm-hmm. you, you had a good point, uh, saying that if it's a, uh, an Ooh, answer, I need that... to put this down in the calendar. I had a point. <laughs> <laughs> um, saying that if you are searching for an answer to a problem, uh, there is one style of video that you would watch, and and if it's not the case, you would more enjoy entertainment so let, let, let's say and, and you're absolutely right with that I, I agree 100% because let's say you have a poor arm at home and, it, and it's broken uh, mm. and you need to fix it and, and in order to fix it you go to YouTube and you are searching uh, a video about how to fix that particular problem you have the choice of one guy explaining how to fix it seriously in the style of no one like boring uh, the guy is out of the frame, but he's explaining how to fix the damn power hammer. Yeah. And you have a guy next to the power hammer jumping around, singing songs, and being super energetic about how to fix the, the damn power hammer. But that part only comes after n- nine minutes of the video and him talking about himself. Which one would you like to see? I would go for the one who is the most to the point and have the least amount of flourishes around yeah. the topic and the question I have. Okay, so to me, there is these two kinds of videos or, or makers video on the YouTube. There is the the guy making a project, building something, and it's all about the project and the craft. And there is the un- entertainment videos, which can also be about the craft, but less. So the, the equilibrium, the balance between uh, the entertainment and the craft or the project uh, is kind of 70-30 in one hand and 30-70 and in the other. Uh, and both are fine. Both must exist because it's not the same video that you would watch uh, every single day. To not, tonight, if I want an answer to a, to a question, as you said, I would watch the first one. And tomorrow when I'm tired and just want to um, relax and have fun and watch something, I would, I would go for, for the second one. Um, so I, I believe the, the style is very much something very personal and, and it, it develops over the years uh, because you also change. You're, you're not the same at the beginning uh, of your journey as a maker um, and uh, as you are five years or 10 years or 20 years into it. Um, I believe Jimmy developed his style of videos because 
if he's been doing that for 30 years and and he didn't really care about the angle or the sound or the music it's, it's not and what he didn't important. know better yeah and he mm -hmm. didn't know better at the time um so yeah it's it's i mean if someone is listening to this and 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 want to start doing videos for youtube uh the only advice that i could give is just make videos and and after editing a few uh you'll know what you like and what you don't like what you want to do with it and and and, and what everyone like just yeah, try it out yeah. You you won't know until you try actually a different style. Absolutely, try try different things, and and for example, just a quick example. I'm always syncing the 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 shots to the music that I'm using. So every three seconds or four seconds or two and uh, seconds and fifteen frames, uh, I have to switch my angle. Uh, I mean, I switch my angle in order to for the video to be dyna dynamic and interesting and and showing different stuff. But it takes me freaking hours to edit. Oh yeah. Uh, ed editing a video is, is probably two or two days or two and a half day of work just for one eight minute videos or 10 minutes videos. If I didn't do that, if I just shot something uh and 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 speed it up and change the angle and speed it up, I could produce two or three videos uh a week if the project is fast enough and quick enough and small enough. Mm. Um so it it it, it it really depends on what you want to do. Produce a lot of videos easily, quickly. Yeah, sure. But it's also attached to a st certain style because if you want to sync the music, you have to choose the music. You have to um, shoot multiple angles of the same thing in order to be able to switch it. And it, it, it's, it's a lot more work. So um, there's also that's also something to consider in my, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I mean sort of, to step back a little bit, there's, I feel like that's two different markets when it comes to the video styles, mm -hmm. like either entertainment or informational. Yeah, the, the, you might make a video that overlap the two of them, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it, it it's it's the, it, it, it different different audiences. It's different purposes. I feel for the video. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I, I thought I had something more. Hold on. Mm -hmm. That I got distracted because someone is yelling "time." <laughs> the chat here. You had um, the focuses of the week. That, that's yeah. what we did. Well, that's what you had. <laughs> I guess that could be. No, there was something different, but I guess it doesn't matter because we should round off anyway. Uh, I think this is something worth coming back to, though. One of those. Yeah. Um, yeah. Habits. No. No. Oh, here it is. There's actually no original ideas left. Yeah. You're right. Like, no, it, no matter if that's true or not. If you start with that mentality when you want to make something, then you have to copy someone. Then you are copying someone no matter what you do. Yeah. It's just the matter of which you do it. And if you can just accept the fact that, yes, you are not original, you are copying someone out there somehow, mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter exactly who. Then you can either be upfront about it or you can try to hide it. But There's one guy that... Be... Yeah, yeah. There's one guy that said, um, everything has already... In already being said but as nobody is listening we have to say it all over again so yeah. I, I, that that's the the probably the same thing there is no original idea in art anymore because it it's been uh it exists for it's been existing for so long everything has been tried probably but it doesn't matter if you copy someone or you copy someone that famous or not uh don't don't be shy uh, or, or frightened by the idea of oh it's been done I can't be original doesn't care doesn't matter uh, just just do what I want to do if if every single movie produced now or TV show produced now would have to be original in order to, to be loved and produced there would be none because mm. everything has already been done so apart from CGI there is nothing new in cinema anymore I mean. It, it's a grammar that is already well known by everyone. So you can reuse shots, ideas and stuff in your personal way. But you're, I, I mean, you're not going to discover cold water. Uh, not, not, to, not to drag this out too long, but... Uh, we've lost Jan anyway. That technology <laughs> they used in The Mandalorian to where they had like a ridiculously large screen in behind the actors. Mm-hmm. 
that's not a new idea. They have no. used projectors beforehand to put a backdrop behind the actors. That's yeah. been done since the twenties. Melies have have, have have done some crazy stuff yeah. back in the so, days, and so they are the, the reusing them over and over again now. So, so it's just higher quality. Yeah, but it's the same concept. Absolutely. And I think we should round off before John falls asleep. Yep. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm just wondering what you, when you guys find a point. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I, I think that's it. So what what's your focus, Jan? Because you have had plenty of time to look something up. Oh, and I didn't even have to. Um, yeah, yeah, just rub it. Going in. good with the with the star today. You know, it's um, Eric from Hand to Rescue. Yeah, uh-huh, because he's one of the one who basically kept his star, but added to it. Mm-hmm. I believe with like giving it a little, like he started being a little bit more personal, but he did it in such a sly way and little by little. Uh-huh. And he he I, is nothing but sly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is true. Um, <laughs> I really like his restoration video because it's from a craftsmanship. It's really high quality. He puts mm-hmm. a lot of hard. You can see it's his hobby that he's he's doing it as a hobby too. I don't know if he's full time by now, but um, I think he's only. No, he's still got to work. Yeah, and work. Um, he got the job. You can tell he from the style he's like going with, but like we talked about it, Arresta style. What mm. I love doing, but it's so. Jimmy subtle. Fast Dance, come on, please, Jimmy Fast Dance. Yeah, Jimmy Fast Dance. Okay, <laughs> what, what he's doing though is um, his audio is really good. Like none of the um, power tools, everything is too loud, and I absolutely love putting on his video turning down the volume a little bit, opening a second window and just start some lo-fi in the background and mm. just listen to like the lo-fi music to him working at that stuff. Like you should try that. Just everyone who's listening, just open up one of his videos, lower down the volume that you can still hear a little bit of the, 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 the work he's doing and just put some of your favorite music in the background. Probably not death metal. Don't think that's going to go that well. <laughs> but um, every kind of relaxed, laid-back music with it, it's, it's really enjoyable to watch. Yeah. So that's my focus. Good, good, good. Good, good stuff. And also, like, actually paying for his Patreon and getting into voiceover videos, it's definitely worth it with him. Oh, see, I, I didn't do that. Like, I've not heard the, the voiceover videos. Oh, it's so much better. Okay. I mean, I mean, he speaks in them, and like he got a voice, but it's so much better. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 because he is actually filling in a lot of the details, and he's also, he, he's, he has an incredibly dry, self-deprecating sense of humor. Oh yeah. So, uh, which, which is just shines through all of his videos uh, and his voiceover work, um, and like he will, he will do a lot of explaining that doesn't show proper in. Uh, in the normal muggle videos, no, never mind. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, Red, what's your thing? Uh, mine is uh, a blacksmith called uh, Max Randolph. Uh, his YouTube channel is Max Randolph Studios with underscores between Max Randolph and Randolph Studios. Uh, he's mainly active on TikTok these days, I believe. Yeah, I have him on Instagram, I think. Um, and uh, yeah, and Instagram. Um, and the reason I'm 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 focusing on him this week is because uh, of his project, the Valhalla Doors, uh, oh, yeah. which is which is an insane project of that sounds good, crazy tall wooden doors with a big. Uh, hand forged mechanism behind it and hinges and and everything. It's it's absolutely uh, crazy. It's beautiful, uh, and and he's he keeps working on it. And now he has to do uh, to make a window uh, and a clock and and it's brilliant work. If you don't, and the guy is, is, seems to be very nice. Um, so yeah, if you have Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, or any social media, uh, go check. Max Randolph Studios. Yeah, that's a good one. I need to binge that shortly. Yep. Uh, I actually realized I'm going to cheat, and I'll have two spiffs. Focuses. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Uh, (laughs) 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 Uh, First off, uh, Justin White of Garage Avenger on his Mm -hmm. podcast, Make IDs Reality. That's a mouthful altogether. Uh, he interviewed Ivan Eiler from Metal Shop Masters. 
Yeah. And oh, wow. it was really, really good chat they had. Uh, Justin's podcast have been really good for a really long time, and he's been getting more and more uh, up there and interesting people on. And this last episode was especially interesting, I find. Uh, also I because listen. Ivan Eiler has the most sexy, dreamy voice you can ever dream of. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's hard to stay awake when that man talks, even though it's really fascinating and interesting. Mm. Uh, also, Ivan Eiler himself got a YouTube channel that is super fascinating and well worth a look. But my real and proper focus, I had to concentrate for a second, hope you didn't notice, uh, is uh, today I found out yeah. a fairly big YouTube channel, but it's my kind of very specific and nerdy facts about anything from uh, the last time you could legally sell your wife to another man in the UK, <laughs> which is not that long ago, apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, and how many damsels in distress was actually saved by a knight, uh, which is horrifically the exact opposite story of a lot of damsels being kidnapped by knights and being married off and raped. And also a, a lot of other fun, interesting stories from yeah. history. But it's, uh, his style might not be for everyone's liking because he's very much a talking head with overlays and things. But it's super fascinating and he delivers it really well, I think, even though it might come off as being a bit too dry. But it's humorous match and I find it interesting. Yeah, cool. So, cool. Gonna check that out. Must watch. Yeah. Yeah. Podcast with Ivan Eiler, Ivan Eiler's YouTube channel. And today I found out. Nice. Are we done? Yep. Yep. Woohoo. Nearly, really? nearly within the hour time that we set or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not not at all. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, but it's time to go to bed. Yeah, and so if you want to go to bed with us, no, wait. Uh, no, you can find us the... at yeah two thirds focused on all of the mostly social places, and you can send us an email at two thirds focused at gmail .com if you have any thoughts, questions, or feedback. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And you can find me at Rasmus Lewin and lewinsmed.no and you can find me at theredsmith.com and redsmith or theredsmith uh, on all the social places and it's nerdinventor.com and nerdinventor on YouTube and Insta and all the other social media places yoohoo we're getting better at this. bye <laughs> bye <laughs> bye guys see you next week